Hi folks, HR Funk here with a midweek update. And the topic of this midweek update comes about as a result of something I saw this past weekend. And it's something that I've seen many times over the years, and that is a malfunction in a semi-automatic pistol caused as a result of something the shooter was doing. Generically, these are called shooter-induced malfunctions. And I thought, with all of the people out there who have recently become firearms owners, particularly first-time firearms owners, this would be a good topic for this midweek update. And what I'm going to do is cover both the malfunction that I saw this last weekend, which was a failure of the slide to lock open after the last round was fired from the magazine, as well as a closely related malfunction, and that is when the slide locks open and there's still ammunition left in the magazine. And the common denominator in both of these malfunctions is the slide stop. Now I have to say at this point, it is possible for both of these malfunctions to result from a mechanical problem with the pistol, or they can be caused by something the shooter is doing. And I'm also going to cover how you determine which of those is actually causing the problem to hopefully avoid having you send a firearm back for repair when it's not necessary to do so. First, I'll show you what's occurring many times when the shooter is causing the slide to fail to lock open after the last shot is fired. Now typically, when the last shot is fired from the magazine, the slide locks open just like that. But, depending on where the slide stop is located and how the shooter is gripping the pistol, it's possible that the shooter could be depressing that slide stop either with their non-shooting support hand or if it's far enough to the rear, possibly even with the thumb of their shooting hand. And if that happens, notice the slide's not locking back. Now sometimes the shooter may not even realize what's happening because if it occurs very quickly under recoil as they're trying to grip the pistol, they might not even realize they're applying pressure to that slide stop. Similarly, if they're doing it with their non-shooting hand and having their thumb from the support hand pushing down on there, again, if it's very quickly as the pistol recoils, they might not realize they're doing that. The other malfunction is the one where the slide locks open and there's still ammunition left in the magazine. With this one, what's happening if the shooter is causing the problem is he or she is unintentionally pushing upward on the slide stop as the pistol recoils and causing it to lock open just like that when there is still ammunition in the magazine. Again, this can be very quickly as the pistol is recoiling and it only takes an instant to cause that to happen and the shooter has induced that malfunction. So, how do we determine whether or not our slide stop issues are a mechanical problem with the pistol or if it's something we're causing ourselves? Well, there's a couple of ways to do that. One way that works many times is to try shooting the pistol one-handed. If you're causing the problem with your support hand and you fire the pistol one-handed, obviously your support hand is not there to cause the problem. And if it only occurs when you're holding the pistol in a two-handed grip, but not when you're firing it one-handed, that's a very strong indication that you are doing something to induce that problem with your support hand. The other way to try to diagnose this as a shooter-induced problem is to have another shooter, preferably an experienced shooter, who's knowledgeable of the firearm you're shooting, because if someone who's either inexperienced or doesn't know the type of firearm you're shooting, they could potentially induce the problem just like you are, and then you're going to think that it's a problem with the pistol. But when you send it back for repair, the technician or the gunsmith is going to check it over, it's going to work fine, and they're going to tell you there's no problem with it. But if the more experienced shooter fires it and it doesn't occur, and the problem only occurs when you're shooting it, that's another very strong indication that you're inducing the problem in the pistol, and it's not a mechanical problem with the pistol itself. So what do we do if we determine that it is the shooter themselves who are inducing the malfunction in their pistol? 
First, take a good close look at that shooter's grip and see if you can determine what might be causing the malfunction. If you can determine that, many times just altering the shooter's grip slightly on the pistol will be all that's necessary to mitigate that problem. Now there could be a situation where depending upon the exact configuration of the pistol and the location of the slide stop and the size and shape of the shooter's hands and fingers, there could just be an incompatibility between that shooter and that firearm. If that's the case, it might be necessary to transition the shooter to a different firearm. But most of the time, just altering the shooter's grip will be all that's necessary to remedy that problem. So there you have it. That's two shooter-induced malfunctions and two easy ways to diagnose them as a problem the shooter is causing and not a mechanical problem with the pistol itself. And that's the midweek update for today. By the way, quick subscriber update. As of today, I'm up to about 19,700 subscribers. Thank you to those of you who have recently subscribed, and a special thank you to those of you who have been subscribers for a while and are encouraging new people to watch my videos. Remember, when I reach 20,000 subscribers, we'll celebrate by having another live stream. And also remember, if you order anything from Optics Planet, be sure to use my discount code, which is... And if you use that discount code, it's good for 5% off anything you purchase from Optics Planet. See you next time, folks. And until then, good shooting. Bye-bye.